Okay, so you've read the question, and this is essentially a big five problem. We've got the kid on the Ferris wheel, and the question said that he's going at a constant speed of 2 meters per second. So V1 will be 2 meters per second, but so will V2. Now the most rookie mistake here, the grade 11 mistake here, is to say, well, the acceleration, 2 minus 2 is 0. There is no acceleration. But someone who has learned physics knows that acceleration is not a change in speed over time, it is a change in velocity. And are these two velocities the same? Definitely, definitely not. So the difference in them is not going to be zero. Okay, so the initial speed is two meters per second. What direction? Should we just call it forward? If we knew, we could say east. It's important, though, if you call that east, to realize that v2 is not south. Okay, the, as the Ferris wheel goes in a circle, five seconds later, so the time is five seconds, the person is going straight down. So v2 will be 2.0 meters per second down. For part A, we're trying to find the acceleration. We don't know the D, so we're going to use the definition of acceleration, no problem. When we sub in, we'll get 2.0 meters per second down, minus 2 forward. But I'm going to change that to plus 2.0 instead of forward. It'll have to be backward. And we'll divide that by 5 seconds. So I'm going to end up with 0 0.4 down plus 0 0.4 backwards meters per second squared. The units have already worked out and I was being a little lazy I left out my units. But it would be meters per second divided by seconds meters per second squared. Okay so this is actually really easy right? If we have 0.4 down and 0.4 backwards what's our acceleration? Well it's just a little Pythagorean theorem. Right, uh, I'll just do a little diagram here if I can. The acceleration A will just be 0.4, and this is 90 degrees, and 0.4. So it'll just be 0.4 squared plus 0.4 squared, squared it. So the magnitude of the acceleration will turn out to be 0.56 meters per second squared. And what direction? Well, it's an isosceles triangle, so obviously this angle is 45 degrees. So, backwards 45 degrees down. That's the direction of the acceleration, down and backwards. Down 45 back or back 45 down, it doesn't matter. No problem? Okay, well part B is maybe a little bit more interesting. We'll come back to this in a second. Part B asks us to find the displacement. So now we don't know the acceleration, and we would be tempted to simply say the displacement equals V1 plus V2 over 2 times time, and sub in. So this would be 2 forward plus 2 down over 2 times 5, which is times 2.5. Two and a half times two is five again. So five forward plus five down. Well, just like before, except a little bit different. Five forward, five down. Then we would expect the displacement to be equal to five squared plus five squared, square rooted, which we would get 7.1. 7.1 meters. And again, the direction is going to be 45 degrees, isn't it? Forward, 45 degrees down. So as far as the big five go, that's hopefully a pretty easy question. I haven't made any mistakes, I hope. No. But in the times that I've given this question as homework to my students, a lot of them don't get this answer. Some students wouldn't look at this as the big five. They would look at the situation and they would try to use their brain which is usually a good thing, and they would say, okay, the Ferris wheel, though, is like a physical structure, right? If the kid was at the top, then he was there, so there must be some way to work out exactly where that part of the Ferris wheel is. And, of course, that's really not very difficult at all. The question is, am I going to have enough room on my board to work it out? I think I will. We were told it took five seconds. 
to go a quarter. So I think you can understand that the period, the time it takes for one full rotation is going to be 20 seconds. And you know the speed is 2 meters per second. So we can find the radius, can't we? Because the velocity is the distance over time, so the speed is the distance over the time. The distance is a circle, which is just 2 pi r. And the time is the period, which is 20 seconds. So the radius of this thing is going to be the speed times the period over 2 pi, which is just 20 over pi, because the 2's cancel. And that's going to give us a radius of 6.4 meters. 6.366, technically. Okay, what does that really help us? Well, if that's the radius, then the displacement is just a triangle where the radius is a side. So the displacement, according to this idea, would be 6.4 squared plus 6.4 squared, which is sure not what we had a second ago, which was 5 squared. Square root. The answer when we use this displacement will be, hmm, 9.0 meters forward 45 degrees down. So when I assign this question to my students the next day, amongst those who have accomplished it, I get some people who believe the answer is 7.1 meters and some who believe it is 9 meters. Same direction. They're not the same. One has got to be right and one's got to be wrong. But assuming I haven't made any math mistakes, which of these is right? I used the big five. My givens are right. I got an answer, which at least seemed to make sense, forward 45 degrees down. But using this method makes a lot of sense too. The Ferris wheel is surely a circle. So why is there a problem here? The problem is that in this case, the acceleration of the thing is actually not uniform. We're going to learn the thing's going in a circle. Even if they go at a constant speed, you know they are accelerating. Well, it turns out they're accelerating towards the center of the circle. So the acceleration was 0.56. That's true. But every second, the direction is actually changing. What we calculated here for part A wasn't the actual acceleration. It wasn't the uniform acceleration. It wasn't the instantaneous acceleration at all the times. It was actually technically the average acceleration. It was the average from here to here. And the average acceleration between two points is the same as the actual acceleration at the midpoint here. So when the Ferris wheel was here, the acceleration was backwards and down 45 degrees, i.e. towards the center of the circle. And that works. That's perfect. No problem. But at the very beginning, at time equals zero, the acceleration was 0.56. Which way? Down. At t equals 5 here, the acceleration was 0.56 meters per second squared backwards, left. So the direction was constantly changing. So it's not uniform acceleration. Not uniform A. So unfortunately, our big 5 answer here is incorrect. And the winner in this little classroom argument would be the kids who used the geometry of the actual situation. You can't use the big five for part B because the acceleration is not uniform, which does mean that technically what we found for part A was the average acceleration over those five seconds.